Good morning, welcome back to another weekly vlog. We're going into our first full week of lockdown this week, um, so I don't really have many plans going on this week. Um, I've got a doctor's appointment, well, a podiatry appointment on Thursday. We've got Noah Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, although Tuesday and Thursday he is at preschool. Um, I think if the weather's okay on Wednesday, we'd quite like to just go for a little walk to feed the ducks or something. Um, we've still got a bit of duck food left over from when we went to the country park last week. And there's a couple of um, places that are good for feeding the ducks nearby. So if the weather's okay, I think that's the plan for Wednesday, just so that we can do something with him and get him out and get a bit of exercise and something like that. But apart from that, it's a very, very quiet week with not many plans. Um, it's just lockdown life, isn't it? Um, it feels very gloomy today and dark. Like it's not, well, it's not even lunchtime yet and it just feels like it's getting dark already. Um, that's the only thing that I'm not really a fan of at this time of year. I do love autumn and winter, like a bit feeling cozy and fairy lights and Christmas and like color like colorful autumn leaves and everything but i don't like those days where it just feels like it never really got light um but anyway i've just got my candle burning i don't think you can see it there but it's just about going down there um uh, and i'm just trying to feel cozy i thought i'd put this jumper on today because i just needed something to cheer me up a bit um i was up quite early this morning so i set my alarm for half past six um because you know you're a true Disney fan when you end up waking up at that time t so you can get something on the website. Basically they brought out um, a Christmas key that you could buy this morning but then there was also, if you spent £20, there was like one of these keys which was a Christmassy one as well. And I don't normally collect the keys but I saw the Christmassy one and I really liked it plus I wanted to get the one that you could buy as well. Um, Frustratingly, I've just had a look on the website and they have still got the one you can buy, although I think the other one has like sold out, so I guess doing it at that time at least I made sure that I got it. Um, so yeah, I woke up at half six because that came out at seven, so I ordered that and then I went back to sleep for a bit. Slightly frustrating because when I woke up at half past six, I actually felt quite awake, um, which is unusual for me, especially in the morning. Um, but I decided that I was going to go back to sleep for a little while because it's a bit early for me. Um, and then when I did get up, I felt really tired. So I was like, stupid body, just doesn't make sense. Anyway, this morning I'm getting on with putting a video up and then I'm going to start trying to do some editing. Um, I'm still trying to work on clearing space on my computer, getting rid of all the old footage on my Final Cut Pro. So I need to carry on doing that because... I don't have a huge amount of space and Final Cut Pro is doing something weird with its backup which means it's taking up like one and a half terabytes or something ridiculous um, but I need to clear all the footage on that before I can like make any changes because I don't want to lose anything. So yeah that's what I'm getting in with today. I've got my virtual mental health group this evening um, doing that just once a month now. We kind of when we first went into lockdown the first time um, I did it every week um, and then it kind of, I guess, I think it probably lost its novelty a bit and also just lockdown went on for a lot longer than people thought it would. So they were kind of having to adapt, I suppose, to getting on with as much normal life as they could. So we then made it every other week, um, but it just wasn't really being used. So I've made it once a month. If people kind of show interest in it being more regular again then we can change it but for now it's once a month so that's this evening so we'll see who turns up to that but yeah apart from that it's just a quiet day at home really much like the next four weeks will probably be so i'm going to get on with doing this editing i'm going to then go down and have some soup and crusty bread for lunch because it seems like the perfect day for doing that <laughs> Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door oh, You don't have to wake up yet oh, We can spend all day in bed I'll put the TV in the room We'll have a Netflix family 
Good evening. It's been a very slow, quiet day today. Um, did my editing this morning, got a reasonable amount done. Had some leek and potato soup for lunch, which was very nice because it was pouring with rain outside and it was dark and horrible and just the kind of weather for soup, really. Um, I then came and fell asleep on the sofa. Oh, excuse me. Um, and I only woke up because my alarm went off and I think I turned my alarm off and went back to sleep and then kind of opened my eyes again and it was just before seven. And I was like, oh crap, uh, yeah, I meant to start the group at seven. <laughs> so um, I managed to get the group started and we had a fair few people um, this week. I don't know if it's because of the new lockdown, whether people kind of just felt like they needed it more, um, or whether it's because we've kind of cut back on the number of meetings we're giving so that people kind of feel like they need to come to the ones that we've got. We'll see, we'll see how things go, but it was good to see a few people there. Um, so we chatted for quite a while. Oh, sorry, can't stop yawning. Um, yeah, chatted for quite a while on there, and I've just been watching a bit of TV. Um, I'm gonna go and probably get a cup of tea now. I'll watch a bit of YouTube before I head off to bed. Um, haven't really got any plans for tomorrow. We've got Noah, but he's at preschool all day. So, probably, well, I probably won't see him in the morning because I can't get up in time. Um, but I will see him when he gets back in the afternoon. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else going on tomorrow. It's, it's going to be like it was back in the lockdown, really, isn't it? Just not, not really having many plans and <laughs> struggling to think what I can film. So, yeah. Hopefully the vlogs won't be too boring. Um, I will try and find bits and bobs that I can still film. Obviously, Christmas is coming up soon. Oh, excuse me. Um, so, I'll be starting to try and get ready for Christmas. I'm determined that I'm going to be a bit more organised this year. And I say this every year and it never happens. But <laughs> maybe this year I can do it, you know, if I haven't got anything else to do. Um... We've got the Christmas cards down out of the loft because I wanted to see what we had left um, before I thought about buying any more. So I've got the bag in here. Um, so at some point I just want to empty the bag and see exactly what we've got in there. Because um, I think some of the cards are mine and some of them are my mum's and some of them might be my sister's, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I want to do that. And then once I know what we've got, um, I want to write a list and then I can work out what I still need to get. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know, I want to start ordering Christmas, I'm going to have to order Christmas presents online this year because I just can't see me really getting out anywhere to get stuff, um, even if this lockdown does finish, like, at the beginning of December, I just don't think I'll be going out a huge amount, like, certainly not, like, proper shopping or anything like that because... I mean, shops are busy at that time anyway, I don't know what they will be like if things reopen again before Christmas whether everyone will go a bit crazy or whether people will just stay away um but I do think I'm gonna have to just do the majority online this year which isn't that different to what I usually do um oh jeez um although like usually I will like maybe go out a little bit and get the odd thing out and about um but I think I'm just going to plan this year that I'm not going to go out. And then if I do go out, I can kind of just look and enjoy. Um, but the majority will be online. Um, so yeah, I need to start asking people what they want. Um, I'm just trying to get ready. Like, I don't like leaving it all to the last minute. Because you just then, you can't really enjoy the run up to Christmas. Because you're stressing about trying to get cards written and presents bought and you know I think this year I just I want to try and spread it out a bit I want to be able to enjoy putting the decorations up without rushing watching lots of Christmas films doing some baking that's the plan we'll see how it goes last Christmas was <sighs> difficult <laughs> let's just say um I'd recently just had my leg surgery so I was feeling pretty rubbish 
Um, I was very immobile, more immobile, well, I mean, I'm not massively mobile now, but I was probably a bit more immobile than I am now. Um, I couldn't really go out. Don't think I, I don't think I went out shopping at all. I know I went to London for a hospital appointment and I think we went into Lush and I think that was about the extent of my Christmas shopping last year. Um, so yeah, last Christmas was rubbish. <laughs> um, it wasn't rubbish, like, you know, I spent it with my family and it was nice in that respect, but I couldn't necessarily do all the things I wanted to do last year, um, and this year <laughs> isn't going to be much better. I remember saying, like, at Christmas last year, I was, like, I'd, like, talking to my mum and stuff, and I was saying, oh, you know, this Christmas I'm just kind of writing it off, and, you know, it's just going to be, you know, a bit of a a bit of a rubbish Christmas, but I was like, don't worry, next year, like, we'll make up for it, we'll do all the nice Christmassy stuff, we'll book to go to places, um, we'll go to a pantomime and we'll do all these kind of things. Um, yeah, little did I know that Covid would come along and completely put pay to all of that. But anyway, I don't want to say it, but, you know, maybe next year might be better, who knows. Um, I just, I don't know, you learn, don't you, that you can't really plan for these kind of things. So I'm just going to try and make the most of this Christmas, do what I can to make it special, um, and just do as much as I can with family, whether that's in person or through video calls, we shall see. But anyway, those are my little, my plans for lockdown and beyond um anyway i'm gonna go and get a cup of tea put a bit of youtube on and then i think i need to get to bed because i can't stop yawning <laughs> good morning the weather is quite a bit nicer today it actually feels like the sun's up whereas yesterday it just felt dark all day which was pretty horrible um but yeah i have got a call with my friend idia shortly um just gonna have a quick catch up I think today um we just tried to work out how to fit it in with what each of us are doing um and today was the best day so yeah doing that we've got Noah today um he went off to preschool this morning they've got a crazy hair week which I think is for children in need I'm guessing they have to take in a pound so he went off with his hair all spiked up this morning which my mum showed me a picture of and he looked very cute very grown up which uh it was a bit, I don't know, made me a bit sad. I was like, oh my goodness, he's not hes not a little baby anymore. He's going to be three in a couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, he's, he's at preschool, but we'll see him when he gets back. So that would be nice. Um, I don't really have any other plans for today. Just a quiet day. Um, I think I might wash my hair tonight if I'm feeling up to it. But that's about it. That's as exciting as my, <laughs> my uh, week in lockdown is getting, I think. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get my phone all ready so that I can have a chat with my friend Lydia. As a young girl, the fields were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl Daydream Morning, we are just getting ourselves ready in the car um, Where are we going, Noah? To feed the ducks We're going to go and feed the ducks So hopefully there'll be some ducks there We've got our food that we have left over from last time um, And yeah, we're going to head over there and have a little walk around the pond and see if we can find any ducks, aren't we? Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes Tired snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit Sound of empty streets. Yesterday has gone to sleep. So all that's left is you and me. I can promise you're the only thing I see. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. For you and me Let our minds be caught up in a dream Quiet 
voices in the night Time is running out of sight A lonely wind is passing by Tries to carry all the whispers that it finds The walls are listening when we talk Making echoes as we walk managed to well I was gonna say we managed to feed some ducks there were a lot of geese <laughs> like a huge amount of geese I don't think I've seen quite so many geese in a long time um, so they got quite a lot of the food um, but we did manage to find a few little ducks um, when we kind of went around the back of the lake so that was quite nice and we saw some swans and just had a nice walk it was just nice to be outside there were quite a few people there but it's quite a large area so like you could keep away from people and things like that um we were we were standing on like there's like a little like jetty thing um and we were just standing on there like looking at the geese and stuff and this dog ran past us and kind of went up to the jetty and then it just jumped in and to begin with we were a bit like oh, okay maybe it's just gone swimming but then it was trying to get you could see it was trying to get back out but it couldn't it couldn't get back up onto the jetty um, and then we heard the people like behind, like they were kind of coming and they obviously saw what happened and you could hear that they were like really panicking. So my dad went over to the edge and like knelt down and the dog had a harness on. So he managed, it was like a kind of, I don't know, like a poodle size. No, it probably wasn't. I think it was like a Labrador, no, not a Labrador. It wasn't that big something smaller like kind of like spaniel type sized um and anyway my dad went and like knelt down and then because it had the harness on he was able to like grab the harness and like pick the dog up out of the water and then the people came over um and like thanked him and they were like oh my gosh the like the dog's never done that before um like you know we didn't even know if she could swim um and like the dog was obviously panicking because she couldn't get back out of the water again and it was really cold so it's a good job my dad was there to pull her out but Noah's little face he, I think he was a bit shocked because she just literally like we thought she was just going to stop at the edge but she just kept going and like plopped in um I don't know whether she meant to or whether she just went a bit too far 
Um, but yeah, thankfully we were able to, he was able to grab her and pull her out because I was slightly concerned about, she like was really, she was really struggling to kind of keep her head above the water. Um, and then they put her on the lead after that and they were like, she's never done that before. Like didn't, didn't think she'd try and go in. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of, uh, well, excitement, not really excitement, but something happening to distract us for a bit. Um, but you know, we had a really, it was nice to just get out and get out of the house for a bit while we're in lockdown and can't do much else. And Noah said he enjoyed it as well, so that was good. Um, and then we came back and had some lunch and Noah is obviously shattered because we were eating lunch and sort of looked over at him and he was just like, his eyes were open, but he just looked like really vacant and I was like trying to talk to him and he just wasn't responding I was like okay are you okay and then I could just see his like eyes going and he fell asleep bless him he hasn't done that for ages like even since he was really little he hasn't fallen asleep on in his high chair so he's obviously really tired so we kind of well he'd eaten most of his lunch but he had some baked beans left so we kind of thought okay we'll just leave it and he can go and lie down so we started taking his apron off and he kind of woke up a bit and then he was like I want some more beans so he had to finish his beans and then he's now gone up to have a little sleep um and hopefully that will kind of keep him going until bedtime and as he's gone down for sleep I'm gonna have a nap as well because why not um I've got a bit of a headache and I just feel a bit spaced out and strange so i'm hoping if i have a bit of a sleep as well that i'll feel a bit better i've got a really sore nose as well so apologies for my rudolph nose um my skin just seems to be really dry at the moment so i need to take better care of it i think but yeah i'm just gonna crash out until noah gets up from his nap and then play with him i'm not sure if we're doing dinner tonight it depends what time my brother gets back from work so we'll just play it by ear and see how we get on so what are we doing, Noah? Um. Oh, I don't know. You, you're getting lots of food ready, aren't you? Wow! We've, just, we've been that having... <laughs> we've is, been... This, is this potato? Uh, that's a sweet potato. Whoa! Wow, yeah, That went a really long way. So we've been having a little tea party with Noah, haven't you? You've been making us tea. And now he's got all the food out and he's cutting it up. And who are you going to feed the food to? Who did you say needed some food? Uh, oh. Noah? Yeah? Who did you say needed some food? I'm and Trixie. And Trixie? Yeah, Trixie. A pizza. So this is Trixie the Triceratops. Noah, yeah. where did, where did Trixie the Triceratops come from? Wow. Noah, yeah. where where did Trixie come from? Um, doofa fairies. That's right. So Noah had a doofa, which is a dummy. That's what they called it. And the doofa fairy came. And did she take your doofa away? Yes. And now you've got Trixie the Triceratops instead. So you don't use a doofa anymore, do you? No. Are you a big boy now? Do you cuddle, do you cuddle Trixie instead? Yes, I do. You do, don't you? So there we go. If you're trying to get rid of your child's dummy, maybe bring the, maybe bring the doofa fairy along because uh, it seems to have worked quite well with Noah. Good morning. I am feeling, I don't know, how am I feeling today? I feel a bit strange, to be honest. Um, it is exactly a year since I went up to London to have my leg surgery. Um, so yeah, this time last year I was well, probably sitting around waiting to go down to theatre. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it just feels a bit of a strange anniversary I guess because things just haven't quite gone to plan they haven't turned out how we hoped they would um yeah still on crutches still can't really put weight on my legs still can't bend my knee it's still very painful and swollen and we don't really know what's going on which is 
frustrating and don't really have a plan as to what to do. So I'm feeling a little bit delicate today. Um, I think I knew I knew it would happen because it's just, you know, it's an anniversary of a difficult time. I still get very, like, vivid dreams and, like, intrusive thoughts, panic attacks about when I was in hospital. Um, if you've only started watching recently, basically, um, I'll pop the video down below, actually, so you can go and watch it if you want. But um, I had a femoral osteotomy on my right leg, which was basically where they broke my thigh bone rotated it and then put it back together with a metal rod and screws um, which went okay um, but while I was in hospital I got quite ill um, I started having se really nasty seizures um, they had to do a crash call for me and get like lots of people coming up apparently um, they were considering trying to like move me to the high dependency unit or intensive care um, but in the end they got the intensive care outreach team to come and look after me on the ward and thankfully that was enough. Um, they basically a lot of my electrolytes had gone really like skew with um, some of them apparently when they did the blood test they couldn't even detect them. Um, we're not sure if it's because of like blood loss or quite what happened but um, yeah I was just really not very well um, for a while and it has definitely had a big effect on me and because of covid i haven't really had any opportunity to go to my doctor and ask for some like help because it's just not it's not been the best of times has it um yeah my head's a mess and it needs sorting but yeah covid has just made things really difficult um my surgeon said that because of the delays in seeing him because of covid it's possible that it's going to be difficult to get my leg back to normal basically um he doesn't know if because of the delays we're gonna be able to salvage anything which is difficult to hear um and yeah everything i don't know everything just feels very messy i mean i've I don't think I realised until this all happened quite how much medical trauma I had from all my years of chronic illness, not being believed by doctors, incorrect treatments, gaslighting, all that kind of stuff. And I think this happening, I mean, it was a completely different situation, you know, it wasn't to do with, you know, medical staff not doing what they were meant to. The medical staff were amazing. Um, but I think just because of the trauma of it and obviously it being medical related trauma, it's brought up everything else. And yeah, I've just been really struggling over the last year with it. And I think today I knew I'd feel bad. I knew that it would be diff a difficult day. So I'm just trying to be kind to myself and let myself kind of feel what I need to feel, distract myself where I need to. Um, I kind of know, I know that I need to speak to my GP about getting some help. I don't really know what help I need or, the thing is, I've had a lot of mental health like treatments over the last, I don't know, 15 years or however long it's been. Nothing has ever really helped and my personal feeling is that that is because a lot of my mental health problems stem from medical trauma and I haven't been treated for that. I've been treated for depression. I've been treated for an eating disorder. And things have improved like to a certain extent, but I'm not sure that actually any of the treatment that I've had has done that. I think it's more just me. Um, I think it's been like getting a diagnosis has helped and things like that. But there's still a lot of stuff that needs sorting and I just feel like I need some help with I don't know whether it's sort of a type of PTSD or just like just the medical trauma I don't know because obviously I've never really been able to speak to anybody about it it's never been taken seriously by anyone that I have tried to speak to about it I have spoken a bit about it in mental health treatment before but it just wasn't the right place like the the mental health team that I was seeing didn't know how to deal with someone with a chronic illness and medical trauma they were very much focused on 
the symptoms of your like depression or your eating disorder and not actually dealing being able to deal with the like the cause of it with that being like medical stuff so I need to I need someone that understands you know like the physical side of things and how traumatic that has all been um, whether that is something that exists I don't know if, if it's something that you've kind of had help with do let me know because I'd just be really interested to know kind of what I should be looking for basically um, but yeah just with Covid at the moment like I think because of like the trauma with what happened like this time last year and also just the trauma of not recovering properly and then on top of that COVID and the effects that that has had on my mental health with regards to the way dis disabled people have been treated, having to shield with no support, losing all my medical um, appointments and all that and also the concern about the actual illness it's just everything has just built up and I feel like I've just been treading water for the last year and I don't know how much longer <laughs> that's going to have to happen um, but it's just it's something that I would want to talk to my GP about face to face I wouldn't want to talk to another doctor about it because they don't know me they don't know my history and my GP does and she knows pretty much everything that's gone on over the years so I need to talk to her about it but there's just not been a right time unfortunately um, and I'm hoping if Covid kind of ever goes away then I can do that but yeah today is just it's just a funny old day um, I'm trying not to think back too much of like oh this time like at this time this was happening but it's kind of hard not to when it's just I don't know in your head so much um, but yeah, just trying to distract myself. I've got um, an appointment with a podiatrist this afternoon, just at my local medical centre, which is something that I've been trying to get for literally probably since the start of this year. Um, ever since I had my leg surgery, I developed problems with my feet. Um, my, I've had a lot of swelling, and I don't know if that's what it is, um, but my nails went all strange. Um, I keep getting infections and all these kind of things and again COVID has stopped me getting any kind of support with that up until now so yeah I'm seeing someone this afternoon I don't know what they'll be able to do things have kind of settled down a bit so it's it could I really could have done with seeing them like earlier on but we'll see we'll see so I've got that this afternoon um, and we'll have Noah when he gets back from preschool um, but yeah, I'm just trying to get on with doing some editing, uploading a video, that kind of thing. And yeah, trying to distract, distract myself as much as I can. Good evening. Sorry that I haven't really spoken too much today. Uh, it's just been a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a weird day to be honest. Um, got a little bit of stuff done this morning and then had my lunch. And then this afternoon I had my appointment with the podiatrist, um, which went okay. Um she i'd never seen a podiatrist before she checked the um like pulses in my feet with like a doppler thing and she said that they were okay um and basically if you don't like foot talk then you might not like this next bit but um basically she said that she what she thinks has happened to my feet is when you have um, a general anesthetic especially if you're under for quite a long time it can make your nails stop growing so she said some people will get like a ridge in their nails where um, like it's stopped and then when you come out of the general anaesthetic they start growing again, which I'd never heard of. Um, but with me what she thinks happened was that my toe, like two big toenails literally stopped growing completely um, and kind of didn't start again. So that nail ended up growing out and then I had like a gap which is why I started getting infections and everything. Um, and then the new nail has started growing underneath, which is why I've got like a nail underneath and then a nail on top. Um, so yeah, she said basically it's just a case of waiting for it to grow out. I have like part of the nail is black, so I've just got to kind of keep an eye on that. She's hoping that will grow out as well. Um, but if it doesn't, then I've got to just let them know. And I don't know, I don't know what will happen. Um, and basically because um, I've been getting a lot of swelling in my feet after my surgery for the last year. Um, 
it's caused just some issues with like slightly ingrown toenails um which i know is probably a bit too much information but it's part of chronic illness and everything else um so she just kind of tidied well she did she sorted out like the toenail basically to help unembed it from the, the skin which was quite painful um and just try and make it so that it doesn't like happen again um and then she's just put like an eye an eye beam excuse me i don't know why the dogs are barking right sorry about that hopefully they're going to be quiet um yeah she's just put an iodine dressing on it to kind of help with any like no, like keeping it sterile and so that no bacteria gets to it so it's a little bit sore at the moment um but hopefully it will kind of sort itself out she says that i don't need to see her again unless um i get more problems with like the swelling and stuff um and if i get any issues with like the nail growing out and stuff so yeah, that went okay. I just I just wanted someone to look at them and tell me what was going on because nobody seemed to know. So it was quite helpful to her, for her to just have a look and kind of give me her opinion. Um, yeah, and then came home and we had Noah here and we've just kind of been playing with him, gave him his dinner um, and Lisa's just picked him up and I am now going to crash out on the sofa for a bit because I'm just, I'm shattered. I don't know. I think today has just been mentally draining more than anything else with it just being like the year anniversary of having my operation and it's just I don't know a lot going on in my head and I think it's just wearing me out a bit so I think I'm gonna have a little nap now and then watch a bit of tv and just have a quiet evening um I need to I've had my report from um the driving assessment center that I went to last week um so i need to send that over to motability um i've also asked i like i emailed the driving assessment center and asked about slightly different hand control um one of my friends suggested it because it's the one that she uses and she said it's a lot easier because um you're not having to like have your hand like fully on like an accelerator all the time it's just your finger um so i've asked them about that apparently i don't need a new assessment for that one um but they would recommend having like driving lessons with that adaptation. So I need to speak to Motability about that. Um, but yeah, I need to send those things over to them. Um, I need to write my cards for November because I'm behind. <laughs> and so I might get on with doing something like that. I don't know. We'll see how we get on. Good morning. I started off my morning with a virtual council meeting. Um, and to be honest, I've just been faffing about since then, um, struggling to get myself motivated today, but I want to try and edit, well, I'd like to try and edit the whole of a weekly vlog, we'll see how we get on. Um, oh, I've got a really itchy nose. I need to, well, I need tomorrow I need to film a couple of videos. I've got an idea for one of them, I'm just struggling, struggling a little bit to decide what to do for the other one. Like, I've got a whole list of ideas, but sometimes I just look at it and I'm just like, I just don't really... I don't know, feel inspired to do any of the ideas on my list. Um, so yeah, if there's any videos you want to see, let me know because it's good to have your ideas. It gives me new ideas as well. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to start thinking about like Christmassy content that I can start doing. And I have got a few ideas for it. Um, but if you've got any more, let me know. Um, so yeah, I am just going to get on with doing some editing. I haven't got any other plans today so it's just going to be another fairly quiet day in lockdown. I've got a big old pile of posts that needs opening. It's been building up over the last week because I'm just terrible at opening posts. Is anyone else like this? Like some people I know, as soon as they get posted through the door, they open it. I just, I don't know, I really struggle to do it. Like occasionally I will but usually I just, I just, I don't know, I kind of put it to one side and I'm like okay I'll do that later like when I can when I've got time or when I can deal with it and then it just ends up sitting there for a few days which isn't great but I don't know I just find it easier to do that than opening stuff when it first comes through the door for some reason I don't know it's always been like that um so yeah I need to open that later so I'll hopefully be able to show you that uh children in needs on tonight I don't know how I feel about children in need um Nina Tame, who I've mentioned on here before and I follow on Instagram, um, 
has done a highlight on her Instagram stories about children in need and what she like thinks about it. And it just got me like thinking. I think she was talking about how it's just it do, it makes her feel uncomfortable that like disabled and vulnerable children are having to effectively kind of beg for money to help them with their like conditions or circumstances or whatever and that you know she was saying that it should be the government that are supporting you know vulnerable and disabled children and I do I agree with that and the more I think about it the more uncomfortable it makes me feel I mean I'm not I'm not against like raising money for charity by any means um you know I try and help charities wherever I can and I've done fundraising um and I guess this could be like you know applied to a lot of things like mental health and um other like illnesses and things like that um I don't know I don't know how I feel like I've always watched children in need um but the last few years I've started to just feel a bit like I don't know that they just shouldn't have to like go on TV and talk about their illnesses and beg for help. I don't know. I don't know if that's just because of my situation and the fact that I just think that there should be more support, you know, whatever, not you know, not having to like ask for it for it to just be there. Um I don't know. I don't know. I might watch it. I like, I enjoy the way they put it together and things like that. I just I guess the whole concept just feels a little bit problematic to me. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on children in children in need because I'd be really interested to think here. I'll like I'll link Nina's um, Instagram down below so that you can check out her highlight on children in need because she explained it a hell of a lot better than I can and it just it gave me food for thought um, and I think that's important when you're kind of thinking about any of this kind of stuff that you just kind of evaluate it and ask yourself kind of how you feel about it so anyway the children in needs on tonight um but there's also gogglebox which i love it's one of my favorite programs is gogglebox and there's also a new episode of the mandalorian coming out so i'm very excited about that um so yeah just gonna be a another quiet day in lockdown so this is what happens when you don't open your post for a little while um yeah, I've got quite a big big pile for some reason. Actually, it doesn't help. I've got like three boxes that are quite big. I think it looks like there's more than there is. But yeah, I've had my lunch and I'm going to make a start on opening this post. Hopefully get through it all. And if there's anything interesting, I will show you what there is. Right, I thought I'd start filming stuff as I open it because it saves me getting stuff in and out of boxes again. Um, so the first thing that I thought I'd show you was this uh, Shop Disney Christmas decoration. Um, if you'll know by now, if you've been watching my channel, that I am slightly obsessed with, well, Disney, certainly slightly obsessed with Disney and also um, their Christmas decorations. Last year we had a Disney tree um, and I've just kind of been adding decorations um as i've kind of found ones that i like um this one is actually a disneyland um paris parks exclusive um i think it's all in french and uh, it's got fantasy land on it so i'm guessing that it is um and i actually ended up getting this because i wanted to get something else and i wanted to get a key um and i was going to get another decoration which was another paris exclusive um it was like a little gingerbread mickey um but when i put it in my basket it said it had sold out so i kind of panicked a little bit because i wasn't sure whether the other thing i was going to get was going to sell out really quickly so i just had like a really quick look and saw this one and both my mum and I saw it and thought, oh yeah, that looks nice. Okay, we'll pop it in. Popped it in 
and actually I didn't imagine that I would like it as much as I do. It's really cute. It's one of the smaller decorations actually. A lot of the Disney decorations are a lot bigger. Um, we don't tend to hang them on the tree necessarily because they're so big. I've just seen too many people whose trees have fallen over and their um, Disney decorations have smashed. Um, so I've got an idea of what I want to do with them this year. Um, but this one's actually quite little, which is quite nice. It's still fairly heavy, but I just absolutely love it. It's obviously Cinderella themed, um, but it's from Fantasyland. So they're sitting in a little teacup and you've got the two little mice, Gus, and I'm not sure what this one's called. Um, but I just really like it. I think it's really pretty and it's got like sparkly bits on the teacup as well. So yeah, I like that one. That was nine, it says 9.99 euros. So I'm not quite sure what it was in pounds, but if it's still available, I will link it below as with everything else that I show. So the next thing that I got was this uh, Disney key. It's not the like typical Disney key. It's a like hanging ornament one. Um, and it's a lot heavier obviously than the normal Disney keys. It's kind of made of um, like ceramic-y type stuff. Um, but I saw it on their Instagram, I think it was, and just fell in love because I absolutely love the gingerbread Mickey and Minnie. He's got like sparkly bits on him. Um, it says 2020, just in case you don't want to forget this year. Um, and I just thought it was really, really nice. And then the last thing is, because I spent over £20, which was what I was trying to do, um, I was able to get this key. Um, I don't normally collect the keys, but I saw this one and I just, I really, really liked it. So I've got the Cinderella one already, and then I've now got this Christmassy one. Um, I just thought it was really, really pretty. Um, I kept meaning to talk about the Disney Christmas advert, actually. Um, let me know if you've seen it. I absolutely loved it. Um, made me cry, but uh, it was a good advert. Alfie, what's the matter? He's nudging my arm. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was so pretty. It's like all sparkly. Um, you've got like the sparkly castle. You've got Mickey with the little um, sort of festive star lights on, which I thought was really nice. So yeah, I need to work out how I'm going to display that. Here he is. He just wanted a little cuddle. A little scratch behind the ear, didn't he, darling? He's such a cuddly boy. Aren't you? He's such a cuddly boy. Oh, now Freddy's jealous. Freddy's jealous, Alf. No, he's jealous of the, the fact that the cat's sitting on me, I think. Oh. You can't see that at the moment, but it'll do his Oh, okay. That's fine. That, that would be the icing on the cake for him. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, he's gorgeous. But I do have to finish opening the post, Alfie. Why are you licking the table? <laughs> he's a strange boy. Kisses. You got kisses. Oh. Hello, Freddy. Kiss, kiss, kiss. So a lot of the bits that I have just opened um, were actually related birthday presents. So from my friend Susie, um, I got these little black cat, um, I think they're bed socks? Yeah, bed socks, um, which are made to look like a, a little black cat. I'm not quite sure how it works, whether the like rest of the socks are in here somehow, um, but they're really, really soft and people know that I love a black cat so she gave me those and also um, a couple of Percy pigs so we've got the fizzy shoes and then the fizzy pigtails which I absolutely love. My friend Claire then sent me this lovely ceramic um, trinket dish with a picture of Jaffa on it which I thought was really lovely um, she said she'd found the picture on my Facebook I think she said um, so I thought that might be really nice if I've got like some little bits of Jaffa's um, because when he was put to sleep um, they cut off like a little bit of his hair and there's a little paw print and stuff so I thought it might be nice for it to be like a little memory box of just some bits of his that I can kind of look at when I want to remember him um, and I just think this is really really nice so thank you so much to Claire for this and then my friend Katrina who lives in Ireland now I went to college with her um, sent me this from Bloom Boutique um, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera but it is a little I think it's a bracelet and 
I don't know if it shows, but it's got my name engraved on this little bit here, which is really nice. Then the other thing from Shop Disney um, is the next in the castle collection. So this is Snow White's castle. Um, if you've been following me for a little while, you'll know that I've been collecting um, the castle collection like miniature ornaments. Um, I think they have, so they do a pin, they do the little ornament, they do a big ornament, which is quite expensive. Uh, they do a jigsaw puzzle and I think it's a journal. Um, but I have been going for these because I just thought they were really pretty. Um, and I really like this one. It's, yeah, really, really pretty, like proper. Thank you, Alfie. Um, it just looks like a proper, like, princess castle. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice castle um so yeah i'd like to put some shelves up in my office actually and then i can display all these um so this is number four i can't remember what number five is i'd have to check um and they come out bi-monthly i think it is and i don't know if you've got the price on they are these ones are 22 pounds which i think is the same price as the pin um i felt like these were a bit better value than the pin um and i wasn't as keen on the pins for this collection and then I'm going to mark this last bit as ad gifted because these have been gifted to me by Nivea. Um, I am part of the Nivea family so from time to time I get um, sent bits from Nivea to talk to you guys about. Um, they don't kind of specify where they want us to talk about them um, but I always try to keep like put them on here and usually on my Instagram as well. Um, and as it's Christmas coming up um, they offered for me to try a couple of the gift sets that they're doing. Um, so there are like th I think there are three different options that I could choose and I think I just went for the ones for her. Um, I think they did like ones for him, ones for her and ones for kids. Um, I went for the ones for her because I thought that was just the ones I could probably talk about best. Um, so we have got uh, this one which is the Soft Rose Collection and it has got, uh, actually I'm going to look on the back and turn it around and see if it actually says so that I can make sure I get it right yes here we go so we have got the indulgent moisture moisture diamond shower cream which is this one um we have got the nivea micellar skin breathe micellar rose water wash gel that's a bit of a mouthful um which i think is this one i haven't used that one before actually i've not used I don't think I've used any of these ones before actually, so I'll be interested to see what they're like. Um, we've then got the Rose and Argan Oil Oil in Lotion, which is this one here. Um, then we've got the Nivea Micellar Skin Breathe 2-in-1 Rose Water Cleanser and Toner, which is this one. Um, looking forward to trying a lot of these actually, I love like rose scented stuff. Uh, you get a shower puff. You get the Nivea Bye Bye Dry Skin Nourishing Face Mask, which is here, which I think I got in um, another pack that I got from Nivea. So some of these things I might gift to other people um, if I've already got one of them. Um, and then you also get the Nivea Pearly Shine Caring Lip Balm. It doesn't actually tell you how much it is, so I will try and find out and put it on the screen so that you can see how much it is. Um, but... I thought this would make a really nice gift if somebody is into Nivea. I love getting stuff like this because it means you don't have to go and buy it for yourself and you can try stuff that you kind of may not have tried before. So that is that one. And then another gift that they're doing is this one, which is the Nivea Natural Collection. Um, committed to a better future for you and our planet. And this one comes in like a like a, what do you call it cardboard box just with a sleeve rather than the whole thing being this I don't, I don't know I guess it's because this one's probably more recyclable um so in this one we have got Nivea fresh blends with watermelon mint and coconut milk refreshing shower which is this one here which sounds amazing I absolutely love watermelon so can't wait to try that We've then got the Nivea Moisturising Crispy Cucumber and Matcha Tea Body Mousse, which is this one here. Um, again, I haven't tried majority of these things actually, so I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, 
they have then got the Nivea Biodegradable Cleansing Wipes, which I haven't actually tried. I've tried Nivea Cleansing Wipes, but not Biodegradable, so I'd be interested to see what those are like. Uh, the Nivea Soft Moisturising Cream, which is... Sorry, that's my mum just <laughs> going outside. Um, that's just like the classic, I think, the moisturising cream that I have probably used many times before. You've then got the Nivea Hydrocare Caring Lip Balm. Um, can never... <coughs> Can never have enough lip balm thanks alfie at this time of year and then you also get a face cleansing cloth as well um made of microfiber so yeah this should make a nice gift for somebody as well especially if they are kind of into more like natural stuff or um you know recycling and stuff which we all should be really um it would be really interesting to try these i will try and try as many of them as i can before christmas comes so that i can tell you a little bit more about what they're like and give a bit of a review on them um but for now i could just show you my first impression because that's all i can do um and hopefully i can find out how much they are and let you know on the screen um but yeah interested to try both of these thank you to nivea for sending them and for letting me be part of the nivea family and keep an eye on either my vlogs my blog or my instagram not quite sure where it will go yet but i will try and do a proper review of both of these good morning I have actually already been in here once today already. Um, I came up here after I'd had my breakfast and sat in my pyjamas and just finished editing my weekly vlog um, and have left it exporting while I went up and got dressed. So hopefully it's exported, I'll check in a second. Um, I am now going to film a couple of videos. Um, I want to film one about the um, new guidance or the draft guidance for ME that's come out. And then I think I'm going to film one that's just like a cosy autumn -y type video because I think sometimes you just need something relaxing to watch and I like watching stuff like that so I'm going to do that one as well um yeah I don't have many plans today apart from doing that um it's absolutely pouring with rain so I think a, co a cozy autumn video is uh, perfect timing really um but yeah apart from getting these videos filmed um I don't I think I've got anything else on. I'm going to help my mum cook a risotto for dinner. We're going to try making a butternut squash risotto. We've made like risottos before, but we've never done a butternut squash one. And we had this really, really nice one when we went to a garden centre. Oh, it must have been like a year or so ago now. And I've never tasted one that's like as nice as that one was. So I found a recipe on Pinterest and we're going to give it a go and see if we can make it any good um so yeah we're going to do that later um what is it strictly's on tonight so i'll be watching strictly um oh yeah we watched the next episode of the mandalorian last night and it was very good again really enjoyed it i just every time i watch it i seem to fall in love more and more with baby yoda i know i know it's actually not baby yoda but that's what I'm going to call him. Um, he's just so cute and funny and I just, I don't know, there seem to be like more like funny bits in it this time I've noticed. Like compared to the first series, I think this one has got more like humour and stuff in it, which I quite like because you've got the humour and then you've got like the action and like the serious stuff. Um, but I, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um... And yeah, I just, I feel like they're not long enough. I just, I sit there and it finishes and I'm like, oh, I was just getting into that. But yeah, I have to wait for next week for the next one. Um, so yeah, it's just a fairly quiet, chilled out Saturday. I'm going to get on with just turning off my computer, getting set up for these videos and then getting filming. <laughs> Lost again, going back around Dreaming of a time when I get things right Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they in my mind near and far? Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are? Send a prayer if I'm out of Evening. Sorry that I've not filmed much today. It was mainly spent filming videos and then having a sleep this afternoon. Um, we are just going to start cooking some dinner and we're making a butternut squash risotto. Um, so I thought I'd show you how we make it. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I'll have to let you know when we've done it. 
Um, but I'll just take you through the recipe. Um, it's just one that I found on Pinterest, so I'll link it below. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd just show you how we make it and let you know what it's like. So here's a quick little shot of the ingredients, just so you know what we need. This says that it serves six people, um, so hopefully we'll have some left over. And then these are the instructions, but I will take you through them and also link them below. So if you want to kind of, I don't know, screenshot the instructions, then just pause the video so that you've got them here. So the first things that we've got to do, which mum is very kindly helping with, is to chop the butternut squash into one centimetre roughly sized pieces. Um, and also we've got a clove of garlic and also got to cut up two of the shallots. we've got to do is saute the shallots until they're translucent in a bit of hot oil. So we've now added um, the butter and the butternut squash. It also says to add the thyme at this point but we haven't got any. Um, and it says you've got to saute these on a medium heat um, until it's soft which it says takes about 10 minutes. Now just added the garlic and it says to give it a stir for about another minute until the garlic has softened and become fragrant. So we're now just adding all of the rice and we've got to just coat it, give it a good stir so that it's coated in the other ingredients. And now comes the bit that takes the longest. We have just got to start adding the stock a little bit at a time, let the rice absorb it, add a bit more, let the rice absorb it and continue. Um, I would recommend doing it this way. I know it takes a longer time, but it tends to taste better, I think, if you do it slowly than if you try adding all the stock at once. So yeah, just gonna get on with doing this now. Right, so the stock has finally all taken into the rice and it has cooked through. We've now turned the heat off, added a nice big tablespoon of mascarpone and then we're gonna put in 40 grams of parmesan as well and just stir that through to make it nice and creamy and cheesy. Excuse my weird angle, I'm just trying to balance on my crutches. Um, I thought I'd just give you a quick 
got a potato on the risotto because we've cooked it and we've eaten it and it was really really nice so i would definitely recommend it um i wasn't sure that it would take all the stock but actually it was definitely needed um we just made sure that the rice was kind of cooked through but it still had a bit of a bite to it which i think is quite nice because otherwise it just gets a bit mushy um but yeah it was really nice really creamy really tasty and everyone seemed to like it so that one was as a here yeah, can't speak that one was a success Good morning, please excuse the fact that it's rather dark in this corner. I need to do something, I don't know, to light it up a bit. Um, and also you can probably hear the rain pouring down because I'm up in my bedroom and I've got Velux windows so it's always quite loud. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get on with a little bit more tidying this morning. I'm, I need to just go through my medical folder which is going to take me a while because it's pretty big and there's a lot of stuff in there to get through but I think I'm just going to carry on doing that. I've got The Simpsons on TV, um, a cosy jumper on and yeah just kind of feel like I'm hibernating from the rain. I haven't really got any plans today. I'm going to wash my hair this afternoon. We've got a, slow co a stew in the slow cooker which is cooking for dinner which I am very much looking forward to. It's definitely the right weather for it. Um, and then I'm a celebrities on this evening that starts tonight so I'll be watching that but yeah just gonna get on with doing some tidying until it's lunchtime <laughs> did my sorting this morning, managed to go through my whole medical folder, so that was good. Um, I had a shower this afternoon, got my hair washed, had a nice stew for dinner, um, and then we watched the first episode of I'm a Celebrity this evening, and yeah, really enjoyed it, so hopefully it's going to be a good series. Um, I've done a little bit of sorting, written some cards, bits and bobs like that. Yeah, been fairly productive, so that's good. Um, and now I'm going to head to bed, so I thought I'd just finish this week's vlog. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. If you have and you'd like to see more from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell. That means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you've been up to this week how you're coping with the restrictions and everything that's going on at the moment and also let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see me do um, I'm planning my Christmas content so let me know if there's anything Christmassy or just anything else that you'd like to see it would be great to hear what you want to see because it helps me to know what to film also come and follow me on social media my links are in the description below but I'll pop my Instagram and Twitter up here they're the two platforms that I'm mainly on, so do come over and say hello, it would be lovely to talk to you, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!